Good morning again. This is Greater Gospel Temple, the Church of Praise and Worship. It's a wonderful, wonderful day, and I am so thankful to God for everything that he's doing, everything that he's done, everything that he's going to do in our lives, and even up to this moment and beyond. I am so thankful to God for every, everything that he's doing. This morning, we were in Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter for the Sunday school lesson, and we were talking about Solomon, how they were doing the dedications, 20,000, uh, what is it, uh, of one sacrifice and 122,000 of another, and it, it's just amazing at how the people sacrificed to God and dedicated the temple. It was a temple dedication and uh, sacrificed and feasted and, and just enjoyed the presence of God and how the presence of God was so strong in the temple until uh, the, the priest could not enter in. It was just amazing. And I, I want to give you just a little part of that, if I can get to that right now. I might, let's see, I might be able to get over to that chapter. It usually will let me go to another chapter. I want to go to the seventh chapter. Oh, I can go. I have it right here. The seventh chapter. As Solomon, it's Living Bible version. As Solomon finished praying, fire flashed down from heaven and burned up the sacrifices. And the glory of the Lord filled the temple so that the priests couldn't enter. All the people had been watching and now they fell flat on the pavement and worshiped and thanked God. So this is uh, during the, and there were 120,000 sheep and there were 22,000 oxen that were sacrificed that day. And I mean, God is, he's just awesome, isn't he? Now let's go to the sixth chapter. And I had said during the Sunday school lesson this morning that I would talk about uh, what he prayed about what he prayed for that was in the sixth chapter. So I didn't get to that. So I'm doing it now. Then said Solomon, the Lord has said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. But I have built a house of habitation for thee and a place for the dwelling, for thy dwelling forever. Excuse me. No, my habit is and I guess it might be this OCD thing. I don't know. I'm not saying that I have a, what is it? Um, what do they call it? A condition. I'm not saying that. But I like for things to be right. So I usually go back and do the whole sentence. So instead of talking about it, I'll do it. And the king turned, let me see. But I have built, this is verse 2 of the sixth chapter of Second Chronicles. But I have built a house of habitation for thee, and a place for thy dwelling forever. And the king turned his face and blessed the whole congregation of Israel, and all the congregation of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who hath with his hands fulfilled that which he spake with his mouth to thy father David, saying, since the day that I brought forth my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city among all the tribes of Israel to build an house in, that my name might be there. Neither close, neither chose I any man to be a ruler over my people Israel. But I have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there and have chosen David to be over my people Israel. But the Lord said to David, my father, this is Solomon talking, okay? But the Lord said to David, my father, for as much as it was in thine heart to build an house for my name, thou didst dwell in that it was in thine heart. Notwithstanding, thou shalt not build the house, but thy son which shall come forth out of thy loins, he shall build the house for my name. The Lord therefore hath performed his word that he hath spoken, for I am risen up in the room of David my father, and am set on the throne of Israel, and the Lord promised, and have built 
as the Lord promised. The Lord therefore hath performed his word that he hath spoken, for I am risen up in the room of David my father, and am set on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised, and have built the house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And in it I put the ark, wherein is the covenant of the Lord, that he made with the children of Israel. And he stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands. For Solomon had made a brazen scaffold of five cubits long and five cubits broad and three cubits high and had set it in the midst of the court. And upon it he stood and kneeled down his upon his knees before all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven and said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in the heaven nor in the earth, which keepest covenant and showest mercy unto thy servants that walk before thee with all their hearts. Thou which has kept with thy servant David my father that which thou hast promised him and spakest with thy mouth and hast fulfilled it with thine hand as it is this day. Now therefore, O Lord God of Israel, keep with thy servant David my father that which thou hast promised him, saying, There shall not fall thee a man in my sight to sit upon the throne of Israel, yet so that thy children take heed to their way to walk in my law as thou hast walked before me. Now then, O Lord God of Israel, let thy word be verified, which thou hast spoken unto thy servant David. But will God in very deed dwell with men on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, how much less the house which I have built. Have respect, therefore, to the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee, that thine eyes may be open upon this house day and night, upon the place wherein thou hast said that thou wouldest put thy name there, to hearken unto the prayer which thy servant prayeth toward this place. Hearken therefore unto the supplications of my servant and of thy people Israel, which they shall make toward this place. Hear thou from thy dwelling place, even from heaven, and when thou hearest, forgive. If a man sin against his neighbor, and an oath be laid upon him to make him swear, and the oath come before thine altar in this house, then hear thou from heaven, and do, and judge thy servants by requiting or requiting the wicked, by recompensing his way up on his own head, and by justifying the righteous, by giving him according to his righteousness. And if thy people Israel be put to the worst before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall return and confess thy name, and pray and make supplication before thee in this house, then hear thou from the heavens, and forgive the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest to them and to their fathers. When the heaven is shut up, and there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee, yet if they pray toward this place, and confess thy name, and turn from their sin, when thou dost afflict them, 
Then hear thou from heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel, when thou hast taught them the good way wherein they should walk and send rain upon thy land with which thou hast given unto thy people for an inheritance. Then hear thou from heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel when thou hast taught them the good way wherein they should walk and send rain upon thy land and which thou hast given unto thy people for an inheritance. If there be deer in the land, if there be pestilence, if there be bleak blasting or mildew, locusts, or caterpillars, if their enemies besiege them in the cities of their land, whatsoever sore or whatsoever sickness there be, then what prayer or what supplication soever shall be made of any man or of all thy people Israel, when every one shall know his own sore and his own grief and shall spread forth his hands in this house, then hear thou from heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and render unto every man according unto all his ways whose heart thou knowest, for thou only knowest the hearts of thy children of men, for thou only knowest the, the hearts of the children of men, that they may fear thee to walk in thy ways so long as they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. Moreover, concerning the stranger, which is not of thy people Israel, but is come from a far country for thy great name's sake, and thy mighty, thy mighty hand, and thy stretched out arm, if they come and pray in this house, then hear thou from the heavens, even thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for, that all people of the earth may know thy name, and fear thee, as doth thy people Israel, and may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name. If thy people go out to war against their enemies by the way that thou shalt send them, and they pray unto thee toward this city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name, then hear thou from the heavens their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause. If they sin against thee, for there is no man which sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them over before their enemies, and they carry them away captives unto a land far off or near, Yet if they bethink themselves in the land whither they are carried captive and turn and pray unto thee in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned, we have done amiss, and have dealt wickedly, if they return to thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their captivity, whether they have carried them captives and pray toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers and toward the city, which thou hast chosen and toward the house, which I have built in thy name. Then hear thou from heaven or from the heavens, then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, their prayer and their supplications and maintain their cause and forgive thy people which have sinned against thee. Now, my God, let I beseech thee, thine eyes be open and let thine ears be attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. Now, therefore, arise 
O Lord God, unto thy resting place, thou and the ark of thy strength. Let thy priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let thy saints rejoice in goodness. O Lord God, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of David, thy servant. This is the prayer. This is the prayer. And it's a lengthy prayer, but he wanted to cover everything. He was asking God to let anyone who comes to the temple, who prays toward the temple, bless them, forgive them of their sins, give them victory, let them conquer the enemies, bring them back to this place. Whatever they pray for, God, with sorrowful hearts, with repentant hearts, Lord, bless them, bless them, bless them because of this temple. All they have to do is look toward Jerusalem, God, and I ask you to answer their prayer. Isn't this a wonderful prayer? They were dedicating the temple of God. And he had told David, said, it's a good thought. You have a good heart for wanting to build the temple. But it's not for you. It's for your son to do. And it will be built, but it won't be by your hands. It will be by your descendants' hands. And God fulfilled the promise. And the promise is also, if my people who are called by my, say, my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. This is the promise of God. This is the promise to us today. If we adhere, if we repent and adhere to the word of God and live the life to the fullest that we can do, God will do the rest because his spirit dwells in us. And we have to be humble. We have to repent and accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. God is good. He is great. He is supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. It's a wonderful day here in Dallas and the whole wide world. This is Sunday, March 18th in the year 2018. I love the Lord. He heard my cry and pitied every groan. Long as I live and troubles rise. I'll hasten to his throne. Let that be yours too. All right? I love you. This is Greater Gospel Temple, the Church of Praise and Worship right here in Dallas, Texas. Our physical address is 2511 Kilburn Avenue in Dallas, Texas. We are working on the temple to get it rebuilt. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing, and I am so elated. I'm so thankful to God for the things that he's done today. He's just this week he has done many things. We call them miracles, but they're just everyday things to God. But they're miracles to us, the things that he's done. And just this week alone, I am grateful, 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 so grateful. I love you. Enjoy your day. 214-403-7563. GGT Church 66 at Yahoo dot com.